So, I close off with the last few words about uh, treasures in the uh, Atlantic. And of course, there is no treasure in Atlantis, it's sunken, but there's actually a lot of ore deposits down there in the ocean. And there's two main types. And one type is actually producing a lot of copper. And this scheme on the right here shows that if we electrify our traffic, a lot more copper will be required in the future than we are producing at the present day. And we're not quite sure where this copper is supposed to come from, but one option is going down there into the ocean crust and into the crest where the volcanoes are, because these black clouds, these black smokers, they produce a lot, and I mean a lot, of copper. So, these mounds there, they are actually made of sulfites, copper and iron sulfites, and uh, here we see some of them, and we have taken samples, we know this is reality. So there is vast amounts of ore deposits at the ocean floor, iron and copper sulfites. We just don't know how to get them yet, but they are there, and the first attempts of drilling them have been made. So the idea here is that fluids are creeping down along these fractures, they heat up, they leach these metals out of the rock of the ocean floor, and then they're expelled again at the surface. These fluids then come at 350 degrees, and they're very acidic, and they hit very cold ocean water that is alkaline in chemistry, and so it causes a precipitation of all these minerals on site. There's only two metals that don't precipitate right away, and that's manganese and, copper, uh, and cobalt. Sorry. Manganese and cobalt, they travel in the water for some time, and then they precipitate elsewhere. And cobalt, as you know, is very important for making uh, batteries for electric vehicles. And at the moment, we have a shortage of cobalt. And then on the ocean floor, we form these dark crusts of manganese and cobalt. And here's an image of one of those crusts on a rock from the ocean floor. And uh, this is something that uh, the European Union is now investing in to potentially mine. So here, again, a diagram giving you a prediction of our cobalt demands up to 2030. And the red circle shows us that there's a huge deficit of cobalt that we're expecting will hit us very soon. And therefore, new sources of cobalt are really, really needed. Now, the ocean floor is littered with these little nodules manganese and cobalt nodules. Well, they usually have a core of something else, a little rock fragment, but then there's precipitation of manganese and cobalt surrounding them. And the deeper into the water you go, the more of those you find. So there's literally vast fields near the surface of the ocean floor made of those nodules, these manganese and cobalt nodules. And uh, here, if you cut them open, you see that there's a rock fragment inside. It's only a coat of this material. And there's now big ideas about how to get this material up. We don't think that there will actually be people going down there. It might be more giant hoovers or so, like this potential construction here, where a drill ship is bringing down um, a, a, a steady system of pipes that then allow to hoover up material from the ocean floor, and this might allow us to get material up. But of course, there's a lot of speculation. It's very early days, and there's a large Dutch project now funded, and they're thinking about these uh, caterpillars that are driving on the ocean floor. As you see, it's an artist's construction. It's not reality at this point, but there is serious thinking going on about how to produce this material for our industry, how to retrieve it from the ocean floor. So, will there be deep sea mining for mangan and uh, manganese and cobalt nodules? Well, I don't know, but of course, we must be realistic. There's a large risk for uh, ecosystems on the ocean floor, and not so much for the big ones, but for the microfauna down there. And some of them, some of these creatures we don't even know about at this point, and we might be risking their existence in the long run. So this is part of the discussion, and Greenpeace has issued this cartoon here, where, of course, they're showing quite vividly that uh, in our attempts to save the environment, we're actually destroying part of the environment. So this is a discussion that needs to be had, and any submarine mining will have to take this into consideration. 
So, and this lets me uh, close with one of my favorite authors, Jules Verne, because he lived quite a while ago, but he was so perceptive. He understood that there is volcanoes under the oceans, although he never saw them. He also understood that there was resources under the ocean because Captain Nemo got his wealth from mining submarine resources. And he also knew that we will have to struggle with submarine life forms, although the ones he pictured were much bigger than the ones we have to worry about today. Thank you very much. <laughs>